Good afternoon, John Verlin once again with On Demand Advertising Solutions Digital Marketing Update. Uh, interesting interview last night, uh, Sunday night on 60 Minutes. Uh, Steve Croft had a great report about the influence of Google, and uh, it was focused on, and this has been brought up before, by the way, is Google too big? owns too many companies, has too much influence to the Internet, the gateway of the Internet, and how is that affecting businesses if they don't end up on a first-page search because, uh, according to Yelp's CEO, nobody's going to go to a second- or third-page search looking for a business. And is it unfair competition that Google controls everything? 90%, I believe, of the Internet access. So the you know the p- report basically talked about how they own so many companies including YouTube and I don't know just a, a ton of companies that has a lot of influence with lobbyists and therefore when issues come up about monopoly and things like that they basically can pay to play in Congress and Congress does nothing is sort of summary of the report but very interesting and again where does this all leave the small business owner because if in fact you have to pay to play as we've talked about since day one on on many of these podcasts uh, you're being controlled by the social media companies and you have to pay to have access to targeted audiences they've shifted everything from other media the traditional media that you think of tv radio print magazine email, things like that, because they're the major players, and Google is the biggest as far as search engines. And when they change their algorithms, how does that affect your your search and what worked for you at one point suddenly has changed? Because Google's decided to change the rules a little bit. Now, their goal, according to this report in previous uh, things we've read, is that they want to provide the optimum premium experience for their users or their customers. Nothing wrong with that. But the question is, and brought up in this report, are they favoring their links to businesses they own so it's not level playing field for all businesses? That's the question. Is it favoring them? They say it isn't, but, you know, When you type in a name of a restaurant, for example, or cuisine, and the first four links that come up in the window, could that be tied to a company that uh, Google owns? And they're favored over other restaurants that might come up. Well, it all comes down to, you know, that's something nobody can control. And if the uh, Federal Trade Commission decides to step in and do something about that, so be it. But you can't. You and I can't wait on that. We have to be able to do what we can do to market our products and services, however we can with our budgets, right? So today I want to talk about that, and you know, basically, in spite of what that report says about Google, what can the typical business owner do to ensure that they're getting fair or a level playing field to some degree? And again, this is facing, everybody's facing this. But what you can do is provide Google, or the beast I call it, with what they want, or they say they want, okay? And again, this, there's no uh, evidence at this point that they're doing stuff like that to favor one over the other, but you don't know. You have to go with what you got, right? So here's some tips and some suggestions Uh, from that report that I'd like to at least offer that you might want to consider and why I have been preaching basically rich media content uh, and promoting that because that's something that you as a business owner, A, you can create that, you can list it and own it and promote it. And if you use search engine uh Google AdWords, for example, to promote it, great. You can use Facebook. You can use whatever digital marketing, email, uh, whatever you want, banner display ads, I don't know, you know, whatever you want to use, print, radio, TV, you own the content, and it also gets searched by Google's 
uh, algorithms and Bing. All search engines will search for content. So it's to me, it's a win-win. You can't lose. But a lot of businesses don't really take the time, I, I think, to, to create content. Now, you create a website, and you're hoping that that's going to draw people. But if you understanding the platforms of these search engines, they're always looking for relevant new content. So if you put together a content marketing plan and implement it regularly, that means doing something, say, every week, and then promoting that every week, however you want to, that's going to keep you up forefront in searches, but also when prospects come to find out about you at whatever stage of where they're at, they meet you somewhere or they hear about you through a friend or whatever, that's going to show up on your website if you're using the blog, for example, of the latest hot, relevant content, much like I'm doing right now in talking about something I just saw last night on 60 Minutes. That's hot, relevant content. It may be hot and relevant six months from now, for all we know, because this may be a continuing issue. So it, this is why this is important for you as a, a business owner to, to think about this, because the, the other thing, too, that the Yelp CEO talked about, and I forget his name, but... He just said that if you're on page four of a listing, you're not considered a real business. And he's probably right in that. Again, this is all about brand currency, brand recognition, the business image you portray online, and you really have your website, you've got social media, and then you have a blog uh, to be able to show that and demonstrate your authenticity or your realism or whatever you want to say. So... The fact remains that every business has a responsibility to control your marketing plan and figure the best way affordably to get new customers and prospects. Platforms and media may change, but owned and created content is timeless. And I bring up the idea of the first cave, uh, you know, cave painting in France from the cavemen uh, to today's blog post. The content's always been king. It should be invested in and promoted. Now, this is something, and I, I just say that businesses need to quit fighting the weekly blog idea and embrace it with the rest of their marketing efforts. Well, it's too slow. We don't have time for that. It, it, but it shows online to visitors through your paid advertising that you're consistent and you're relevant to their interests. If you're doing a timely message like I am right now because of something that was on last night on 60 Minutes and people see that over the next week, that perception is going to be, well, this guy's service is timely because I just saw that the other night. Well, that's the idea of creating consistent posts with relevant content because and it's targeted to what your customers are looking for, your prospects. And by the way, Facebook, I read uh, the other day, is... I guess they're cons they are either considering it or they are building a new platform to link businesses uh, with content creators and influencers. So you'll be able, you as a business owner, can target messages and ads through that influencer to their followers or their fans within the realm of the content they're creating. In other words... It's a, it's a real targeted approach, so if you want to reach people looking to buy a home, you may only be really wanting people to want to buy a townhome, and that targeted influencer, their fans are writing blog, or they're, they're writing blog posts about buying townhomes, building townhomes, how to decorate a townhome, whatever that is, and you can buy into that through this link with Facebook. This, uh, I don't know when this is coming about, but this is the concept. And then you'll, it'll be a free link, and you think, oh, my gosh, I can now get through to an influencer to get to a targeted audience with my product or service. But Facebook, will want, you'll want to advertise that more, uh, and that's where the revenue thing will come in. But that's an example of Facebook looking at how important content is because they are seeing that value to be able to, to share that with business owners. Well, right now, you've got to pay to play on Facebook just like Google and you may or may not be targeting exactly who you want, 
but they're trying to sharpen that apparently. But that shows how a huge social media company, how much they value content. Okay, so quit fighting the idea of I don't want to have to hire somebody to write content or record it, such as podcasting like this or videos or animated videos or whatever that content format is. And keep in mind that rich media content, that's video, animated video, podcast or video podcasts, um, any of that is called rich media. That is what's favored by Facebook and Google. They rank that higher. That's why I recommend it, why I do it with podcasting for a number of reasons I've gone into in the past, but primarily because they're being favored in the search engines. And you can get listed on a front page search because of how you're doing your content in a favorable format that the search engines like. Make sense? So once content, ideally, as I mentioned, in the form of rich media, is created, it can constantly be promoted through social media, email marketing, digital marketing, whatever you want. You can promote it. You own it. And this is why I'm such a big advocate of of podcasting, because you own this content. I own this podcast. Nobody else does, and I can put it on my blog as I do, and promote it every week as I do on social media and link that blog post to an ad that I may take out on Google AdWords or Facebook ads or any other social media I want to you know, put it on, Pinterest maybe, whatever I, I choose to target my audience, I own this content and I can direct traffic back to my blog post through this content, which can act as a filter to get you to look at my website. But I'm using this content, this targeted content, talking about what I'm talking about now about Google and how big they are and is it a level playing field because it was relevant last night on 60 Minutes. Does that make sense? You can do likewise for your business. I've had a number of emails, people have asked me about this over the last month or so, about creating content, the time it takes, the expense. Don't look at it as, I've got to now go into this and exclusively do this. This should be a part of your entire marketing platform. I call it the extended marketing platform. This is, this is the, the food that feeds the beast so to speak, and the beast is the search engines and your prospects because this is people are looking for you or looking for your service or your products. They just don't know about you because they have no reason to go anywhere unless you pop an ad out, and then when you do pop an ad out that you've paid for and they click it on and they go to your website, what are they going to see? That's the point. That's why this is important because all of this works together. Your advertising, your content, your website, all is the online presence or presentation of who you are that can show up in a first page Google search of your business name by having this rich media available. Google sees that and ranks it. And guess what? You get uh, first page listings. When somebody types in your business name, suddenly out of 4 million, you come up on the first page with a bunch of links. That says something. That's your online presence. If you're on page 4, they're not even going to see it. So anyway, that's kind of what I want to talk about today, about the uh, 60-minute interview last night about Google and are they allowing a level playing field, or are they too big and just a uh, monopoly, so to speak? So something to think about, but these are some things by owning and creating and promoting your own content, you can take advantage of what you can control and not have to rely on any other media. Radio stations will change formats. TV programming will change. Online programming will change platforms will change, but your content can be consistent and you own it and you can change it when you want to and update it. And that is relevant for your prospects. John Verlin, one, two at ATT.net on demand advertising solutions, the website. Love to hear from you. We'll talk to you again next week.